In this video segment, we're going to take a look at how stairs work in the Home Designer product. As you can see in the example on the screen here, there's a variety of different stairs that you can create. Let's go into the program and take a look at the different types of stairs the product offers. Under the stair tools in Home Designer, you'll find six different types of stair tools along with a ramp and a landing tool. Let's begin by taking a look at the draw stair tool. The draw stair tool is a manual approach to clicking and dragging a specific set of stairs. When you do this, the stairs by default will go in the up direction. You can also hold the Alt key down and click and drag and force your stairs to go in a down direction. The next stair tool is straight stairs. You click and place these stairs and typically these will reach to the next platform above when you have a two-story house or you may have a basement and a story above. And they're intelligent and will reach the next platform automatically. The next set of stairs that you will find are curved to the right and curved to the left. They work in the same approach. You just click and place them again. They're intelligent stairs. They will then reach the next platform above. You can edit these stairs by clicking on them and you'll find a couple of different handles. One that allows you to change the curvature of the stair. You'll also find a move handle to move these stairs and then also one that will change the width by using this different edit handle on these stairs. When the stair is selected, there's a couple of tools that you'll find that allow you to flare the stairs and create a starter tread. You'll find this tool down in your lower edit menu. The first tool is the flare curve stair tool. When you enable this tool, you can come up to the stairs and create a flare on the stair. You'll also find an edit handle to increase the size of the flare. You have added flexibility for creating that flare. The next tool is to create a starter tread. This enables you to create two different starter treads by clicking on the circle in this case and expanding it out to create a starter tread. The next stair tool that you'll find in the stair menu is the L-shaped stair. When you click to use this stair, it's going to ask you if you want to create it in a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction. Then you can click and place your stairs. The next stair tool, very similar to the L stair tool, is the U-shaped stair tool. And again, the program will ask you if you want to do it clockwise or counterclockwise and if you want to have a gap in between the two different stair segments. When you click and place your U stairs, they will then follow the parameters that you entered into that dialog. The next stair tool you'll find available is the ramp tool that is covered in a separate video. And then you'll find a landing tool that you can click and place a landing by clicking and dragging. These will also connect if you click and drag next to a landing. They will connect and if you're using a set of stairs, if I were to click and use the click drag stair in a close fashion like this and then use the landing tool to click in between them, it will automatically connect those stair segments if they are close enough using the landing tool. Let's go in and take a 3D view and see what these stairs look like using the dollhouse camera view. In this 3D view, you see the different stair styles that we've created. Let's begin by taking a look at the simple little landings that were created. Let's say you want to use landings for a specialty project. You may want to remove the railing off of one of the sides. When you click on a landing, click on an edge, in this case, notice in the video there is a red edge that is active. In your lower edit menu, there is a tool that says remove railing from the selected edge and that will remove that railing off of that edge. Next, let's take a look at the stair dialog. I'm going to grab the stairs in the very back here. Double click to open them up. This will open up the stair specification dialog and you're going to find a number of panels down the side. Beginning with the general panel, these were the click drag stairs that we used and notice that there's a button down here that says make best fit. This indicates that the stairs currently do not reach between two platforms. Even though we don't have a floor one and a floor two, the default floor heights require a much longer stair. And when your stairs are too short, 
it will indicate by having this button down here to click make best fit when you enable that it will then extend the stairs between the two platforms so keep an eye if you've used a set of stairs and this button is active you can then enable it to make your stairs fit below are some advanced options that will enable you to have automatic treads to lock the tread depth or to specify the actual number of treads. When you enable these features, it will ungray those fields out. You can come in here and type that information out. In the case where you have two stair segments in this L stair shape, you're going to always want to make sure your riser height matches so you don't have mismatched riser heights. On the style component, you'll find stringer information where you can control your stringer detail. If you want it to be open underneath and have open risers, runner, and then the tread overhang and the tread thickness. On the railing panel, you can specify how high your railing is, the landing railing height, the handrail width, whether the railing is on and if it's on the left or the right, free floating or at a wall, and then the style for the balusters, whether it's open with a middle rail, different panels, and then the top and rail, you'll have controls down here for added control over the dimensions. If you wanted to raise that, you would come in here and type in a value in here. On the newels and balusters panel, you can control if it has newels at the base of the stair, and you can browse out to the library, choose which style you like, set the width, and whether the rail passes over the newel, what style of baluster, again, go out to the library, I'm going to browse out to the library. I'm going to show you a little bit shorter way to change the balusters. And then the line style, which is how it's displayed in your floor plan view. The fill style, again, this relates to your floor plan view. And then the materials that are used for the different components in the stair. I prefer actually to do this in a 3D view and use the material painter and just spray it directly from the library. I'll open up the library in the program and let's take a look at how you can change the different components on your stairs. Underneath the architectural folder, you're going to find a fences and railing folder. In here, you'll find different styles of railings. You can easily grab these and apply these in a 3D view. In this case, I'm just going to come over and you'll notice my cursor change. When the cursor changes, I can then apply that onto the railing. Difficult to see exactly the way that looks. Let's change our render style slightly to be a vector style so you can see where that railing style has made the change. You can also browse into the library, come down here, and underneath the millwork components you will find the balusters and newels. Once you find the different styles that you're after, again you can come over here and click to apply those and see the preview for your baluster change. This is a little bit faster way than going through the stair dialog itself. And if you want to change the colors of the stairs, you can do that through the stair dialog. You can find it in the library if you type a search for a color. You can also use the material eyedropper, pick up the color, in this case off the handrail, apply it onto the stair tread, and make that change for your stairs. Again, a little bit faster way than doing that through the material panel inside of the stair dialog. In the next portion of the video, I'm going to show you how to place a set of stairs in an actual plan and talk about a few additional tools that we have here. I've created a new plan here with both a first floor and a second floor. I'm going to use a set of L stairs to create stairs from the first floor up to the second floor. Using the stair tool, I'm going to come down here and use the L stair, except the defaults for the L stair. I'm going to come over here and click and place these stairs. Now before I actually click, notice that you can move the cursor between the two different walls and it will change the direction for you. Once you like the direction, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and left click, actually place those stairs, and it will then formulate the up direction the way I want it to. Once those stairs are created, and you take a look at this in a 3D view, we'll just use our camera here and point and click in the direction, and now you can see the L set of stairs in the first floor. To create a stair opening for these stairs, click on the stairs and in the lower edit menu there is an option here to create an automatic stairwell. That will generate an opening in the floor above 
if I rotate my camera around a little bit more, you can see the opening is now following the set of stairs. And if I go back to the floor plan view, let's make some adjustments to that opening by going to the second floor. And what's created here is what's called an open to below room in our program, which just basically opens the platform up between the two floors. This is a railing style. You can click on this wall that's created the railing and you can actually adjust it to whatever you'd like. In this case, if I just make it a rectangular style room, you can easily see how that's opened up the room. And now when we take a 3D view, I'll go ahead and use the dollhouse camera view you can see the open to below room that was created from the automatic stairwell that we adjusted. And then you can go into the stairs itself and remove the railing off the wall. Double click on the stair. And then on the railing panel, come over here and remove the railing at the wall on the left in this case. And it will simply remove the railing. One final thing for the stairs is placing walls next to or underneath of your stairs. In this case, below the stairs, let's take a look at how you would put a wall underneath and then also have it get cut off by the stairs. Let's go back to our floor plan view. And I'm going to use the interior wall tool and come over here and just drag a wall next to the stairs to begin with. And I'm going to go ahead and tile my window so that you can see both the 2D and the 3D by using the tile vertically. And it might be a little bit easier if we go ahead and go down to the main floor. So you can see how the wall is extending up past the stairs. You can click on this wall in this view. And as you use your arrow key to slide the wall near the stairs, you'll notice once the wall moves underneath the stairs, it gets cut off. And you may have to adjust this so you pull it up and then the wall will get cut off by the stairs. When the wall's on the outside of the stairs, you can snap the stairs to the wall and have the stair form a stairwell. And then when the wall is underneath of the stairs, you can then have the stairs cut it off once it's underneath of it. And then one small trick about this, when you deselect the wall in this case, it's very difficult to grab it because it's underneath of the stairs. You can always turn off that layer in your display options or you can click near the wall press your tab key and get to the next closest object and now you have control over editing of that wall. To learn more about the stair tools in Home Designer, please refer to our help file. We also have support articles available on our website. Thanks for watching the video.